Do you think Muslims are addressing the issues facing the modern world enough? Modern world issues? Are Muslims for addressing them? Yes. Uh, to be honest, I just did an interview um, <clears throat> with someone, and, and I, I made mention of this. It, in, in large part, it seems like Muslims are, are insular. We're talking to one another about in-house issues. Um, in, a lot, in a lot of ways, Muslims have become otherworldly. You know, the bulk of what we get is just being a good person uh, so that we can go to heaven and making sure that our Akita is correct. Um, but I don't really think, when I read the Quran and when I look at the tradition of our prophet, I don't think that that's the way. Obviously, we have to have correct belief. I'm not, I'm not saying that. But what I'm saying is that, really, Allah says to us, Kuntum khayra ummatan ukhrijat linnas. You are the best community brought out for the benefit of all people. Ta'muruna bil ma'roof. You command by the known standards of good. Wa tanhawna anil munkar. And you forbid what is wrong. Wa tu'minuna billah. And you believe in Allah. So upon, upon the basis of faith, the Muslim community should really be at the forefront of advancing uh, all of these issues that will be of benefit to human beings. And we should be at the forefront of working against those things that are depriving uh, the human, human life on this earth. And I don't see that enough. Again, if we do address global issues, it tends to be Muslim global issues, such as the, 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 um, the, uh, the um, Gaza issues like Gaza, uh, which we should address, no doubt. But I think that I'm talking about even before October 7th, um, just in general, Muslims, you know, we, we're in a very uh, new time for the history of human beings on this planet Earth. Um, issues such as cl climate change, uh, global poverty, even the rights of animals. Our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we have in sound tradition where he even got out of the road or got out of the way of a dog coming down the, down the road. And he um, forbade his companions to mistreat their riding animals. And he even, when we slaughter animals for food, he commanded that we sharpen the knives so that the slaughter would be a merciful slaughter. Um, I would even go so far to say even issues related to diet because um, the studies are saying now so much meat consumption is adding to uh, the effect on the climate. Uh, a lot of these um, uh, companies, they're cutting down forests, parts of the Amazon rainforest to open it up for more um, um, farmland grazing cattle, etc. But we know that our prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, he wasn't like an everyday meat eater like we do in this society. Um, he had a practice of austerity where, for example, he, he, he encouraged us, he taught us, even when we, when we make the wudu, don't waste the wudu water. And you really don't get that. Well, for me, I didn't really get that until we made hajj. When we, were, when we were on Hajj, you know, we were in situations where we had to make a wudu with bottled water. And you'd be surprised. You literally, you, complete wudu, excellent wudu. <laughs> you use this much water. So the notion of wasting water, that's what I'm talking about. Wasting water, um, the slaughter of animals, the uh, or indiscri uh, 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 I, I would say irresponsible slaughter of animals, the mistreatment of animals, all of these things. You know, we know we have animal rights societies today in the West. We know we have efforts to uh, preserve clean water sources and not waste water today in the West. But I don't hear enough of that coming from Muslims. Also, uh, the eradication of poverty. That's something that's on the hands uh, um, and in the heads of leaders of our world. And it ha this is, these are actually trends that are happening globally. But the secular Western society is really at the helm of these efforts. And because of that, the secular Western society is seeing itself as the great benefactor of the world, if not the great redeeming force of the world. And their position is, as you hear many of them articulate it, the old world, the religious world, they, now, this is not true, but this is the argument that they make. 
they are responsible for a lot of the backwardness that we see on the global stage. So, but secularism has come and opened up advances in medicine, the rights of women, et cetera. And that's just simply not true. When we look at the tradition of our prophet, present peace be upon him, um, a, a popular hadith that I like, I mean, when he made hijrah from Mecca to Medina, the first thing that he did besides uh, uh, the, the founding of the masjid is he, he, he established a marketplace for the Muslims. And uh, there's one report of a man coming to him to beg, to, to asking for money, asking for sadaqah. And the, he asked him, praise and peace be upon him, he asked the man, did he have anything of value? And the man said, yes, I think it was like a shirt. And he went and traded the shirt for an axe. And he told the man to go chop wood and come back to the marketplace and sell the wood. So um, he, 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 is a, he, he encouraged uh, business and free enterprise. Um, when it comes to the education of women, he told the men, you all who would educate two of your daughters, you would be guaranteed paradise. Um, and then even we know the history when captives of war were captured, he would, in some instances, guarantee their freedom if they would teach a certain amount of the Muslims how to read and write. So this emphasis on education, this emphasis on access to the economic the economic. Um, uh, system to just have a part to have a piece of the pie for want of a better term I think that these things though small because we're looking at a small community in the history of the world if we extract from this 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 history we see very uh, profound principles overarching principles that are on the, the table today when we go to nations in Africa uh, South America one of the big concerns is how do how do these societies uh, develop. One of the answers is the free market. Well, how do people have access to the free market? Uh, one of the great trends, one of the, 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 the uh, issues on the table of the world today is how do we uh, eradicate illiteracy? Um, also, how do we educate women? We know statistically that societies that educate their, their women, uh, that put effort in having their women educated, those societies tend to fare much better in terms of economic output. So these are some of the, the issues that I think not only are their own, the, 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 the prominent issues on the world scene, but we find in the tradition of our prophet, present peace be upon him, him addressing them. Even issues that are facing, I think America is in a very um, rough space now, and it's not just America. Even back at the, uh, the first Trump pres presidency, there was this scare of the, the rise of populism in places like Great Britain, other, other areas, and let alone the United States of America, India, um, a return to nationalism, uh, uh, which is really sort of an exacerbated form of ethnocentrism and racism. But our religion addresses that. Our religion is very clear that all human beings uh, are members of, of one brotherhood. We are all descendants of Adam. We are all brothers and sisters. And we all share this earth as one home, as one living space. So we can literally just write out we can really just, um, uh, I would say, if we just lay out all of these issues, one after the other, if it's education, if it's the rights of women, if it's the rights of animals, if it's the treatment of the environment, if it is uh, international relations, I think that Muslims should do, be much more active in addressing these matters from the perspective of the Quran, from the perspective of the, of the uh, prophetic tradition. Um, and we would, we would really be of great benefit to the world uh, instead of what we see a lot. Many of us, many Muslims in much of Islamic discourse today is very insular and it's very, um, it's centered on us. It's not centered on what I believe our role is, which is to be, um, as our prophet, as Allah said to him, وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَاكَ إِلَّا رَحْمَةً لِلْعَالَمِينَ and we have not sent you except as a mercy to all the worlds. I believe that those of us who are Muslim, we are following his way. If we are being true to his way, then we should be intentional about fulfilling all of that. The eradication of poverty, the, the spreading of education, the advance of even medicine. I mean, in parts of the world now, we know that uh, many of the diseases like polio, 
people don't really have them anymore, have it anymore. But they they are still uh, uh, prevalent in parts of the Islamic world. Um, so, inshallah, I think Islam in the West, we, we, we are perhaps better situated to address these concerns because not only are we uh, aware of the Quran and the tradition of our Prophet, prayers and peace be upon him, but we also have access to these resources. We're going into these universities. We have access to the resources of the society along with our messaging, with the Islamic messaging. And I think it puts us in a very good situation to provide answers for the for the advance of the world through the lens or through the the the, the message or through the coloring of Al Islam.